Hey there, it's Elior again. It's been a few weeks since the last time I did a video. That's because a lot has happened in the last few weeks. Um, <coughs> my dad that I spoke about in my last video, um, he went downhill pretty quickly. Um, and he passed away a little over two weeks ago now. So he, he died on a Tuesday. He was buried on a Friday, which was the fastest that we could arrange with the, um, military cemetery, the veteran cemetery. And then I came home and sat Shiva for a week. And this week I got back to work. Um, and yeah. Um, I learned a lot over the last few m weeks. Um, this is like my third try trying to do this video and they all seem to come out really boring and with me stopping and thinking a lot. So I'm going to skip over that. Um, I'm going to say that I did the best I could for my dad. Um, it wasn't always the best in the world. Like it wasn't perfect, but I feel like I did okay in terms of making the effort. Um, <laughs> funny thing, uh, Right before he died, just, you know, days before he died, the doctors were like, he's going to live for six to eight months. Um, and I was like, I don't think so, but okay, if you say so. Uh, and they wanted to send him home from the hospital. And I really wanted my dad and I to get a um, short-term rental over in the Seattle area so he'd be close to the hospital where he was getting his treatment and also close to a major airport so we could go see his friends, go see his family, um, you know, be around people he already knew in the area. Um, I had totally forgotten that he used to go to a synagogue, uh, not far from where we had been staying or where I had been staying in a, a hotel while my dad was in the hospital or when I was able to go drop him off or pick him up or visit him at the hospital. Um, so he could have been there. He could have been seeing his friends. Anyway, I, I really wanted to do that. He did not want to do that. He wanted to come back here to Walla Walla so that he could do his taxes and get back to work. Like he just wanted to do his taxes. And even though he admitted fully that he was no longer co competent to do his work, he, he just wanted to keep plowing through. So, um, we had kind of negotiated this, this deal where we would come back here to Walla Walla for one week. I would put him up in a hotel here and, um, my son and I would help my dad get through his taxes. Uh, and we would sit with him and do the taxes and it would be one week. And then after that, that one week of do the taxes, close the business, then we'd go back to Seattle and stay in a, a long-term, uh, like extended stay hotel kind of thing, short-term rental. And, um, so my dad had agreed to that on Friday. I drove to Seattle mm -hmm. to go pick him up thinking that I was going to pick him up. So like literally I didn't bring anything with me. Um, I think I brought a, change of socks and underwear and that was it. Um, and about an hour away from Seattle, I get a phone call from the doctor saying that my dad has taken a massive turn from the worst. He's not going to be able to go home and that I can still come and visit him that night. Um, and that he probably only has a few days to live, maybe two weeks. So I go there at that point. He, they thought he had pneumonia. It turned out it wasn't pneumonia. It was actually the cancer itself was drawing fluid into his lungs. 
there was no bacterial infection or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I visited him on Friday and then they moved him from the regular care over into hospice care. And when they moved him into hospice care, um, then he fell under a different visitation rules. He was allowed to have one visitor one time per week. So that meant that I was able to see him on Saturday and on Sunday since there's a different week. Sunday is the start of the new week. So I was able to see him on Friday under the rules that I was supposed to be picking him up. I was able to see him on Saturday and then on Sunday under the rules of the hospice care. And I spent a lot of time with him over those three days. It was really good. I got to read him messages from friends of his that he had not seen or spoken to in a long time. I got to take dictation and send messages back to people. Um, on Friday, he had lost his voice uh, and he he could only say like one syllable at a time because his lungs were, he was just having so much trouble breathing. Um, but then they started giving him morphine, which really helped a lot. So on Saturday, he still didn't have a voice. He could only whisper, but, um, but he was able to speak whole sentences in a whisper. Um, so we were able to have more conversations on Saturday and it was a good visit. Then he got tired and he kicked me out so he could go to sleep. On Sunday, when I arrived, he was asleep. And throughout the several hours that I was there in his room, he would be awake for a little bit and then he'd fall back asleep. He'd be awake, we'd talk. Um, I'd take messages or relay messages from other people, tell stories, whatever. He'd smile and then he'd just fall back asleep. Then he, sometimes he'd like wake up, he'd see me, he'd smile, he'd look like he was about to talk, and then he'd just go right back to sleep. Um, the morphine was really hitting him hard uh, on Sunday. Um, on Sunday evening, before I left, I spent the last half hour or 45 minutes basically singing the nighttime prayer service and then the bedtime Shema for him. And um, he was mostly asleep, but it was clear that he was responding. I like had pulled the chair right up next to him and I was holding his hand. And sometimes he would squeeze my hand while I was singing. And when I got up to leave, I leaned over to give him a hug and he just grabbed me and gave me a big hug and said goodbye. And I left, you know, like 9.30, 9.45 at night and headed back to the hotel. And then Monday I had to come back here to Walla Walla because um, I wouldn't be allowed to see him again until the following Sunday anyway. So there was no point in staying put, uh, especially since I didn't have my computer, I didn't have I didn't have anything to be able to work or whatever. So I drove back here on Monday, um, got home pretty late on Monday, was exhausted, slept Monday night and was woken up in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning uh, with a phone call from the hospital on Tuesday morning saying that my dad had passed away a couple of hours before. So, yeah, so I spent Tuesday, you know, informing relatives and friends and doing all of that jazz and also um, trying to make sure that, uh, you know, he got picked up by a Chavar Kadisha and got a proper burial and um, reached out to the rabbi at his old synagogue. Um, out on that side of the state who ended up doing the service um, at the cemetery and also informed people from the synagogue. So a lot of people from the synagogue came to go to the, um, the cemetery for the, uh, the funeral service. 
and also a few people from the Ravenna Kibbutz, um, which was a, it used to be an in, intentional community in Seattle that both my dad and I were part of. I was actually, I was a member of the kibbutz. He was on the board of directors, um, before I'd ever even heard of them, actually. Um, yeah, he was known by, by the community as granddad. So it was nice to have some people from the kibbutz there. And it was nice to hear stories from my dad's friends, um, about what he'd meant in their lives. And, um, you know, it was really helpful to me to read the messages that people were sending my dad because it helped put my dad into a different perspective for me. Um, you know, in my last video, as I was like really struggling and, and having a difficult time with my dad, you know, relationships with parents can be difficult. Um, and I was saying that I really needed to be able to focus on, um, uh, finding that spark of the divine in him. And that I was doing that by trying to remember the good things from my childhood, right? From before I was nine years old. Um, but it really helped a lot to read the messages and speak to the people that were his friends and whose lives he had impacted in different ways. Um, friends and Calabash family, let's say. That was really useful. That was really good. Um, I know it was good for him, but it was also good for me because it helped, uh, it helped paint a, a fuller picture of my dad in those last days. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's that. I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, a few people have pointed out that I'm going through a lot of transitions in my life right now. You know, new grandbaby in the house. She's a month old by, by the way, and beautiful and amazing. Really great, great baby. I'm really enjoying spending time with the baby. Um, and, uh, you know, and then my dad getting sick and needing so much care and then, and then passing away. And obviously, you know, transition. It's kind of funny. I'm like, I don't think I've really changed, but it, it's funny how sometimes when I'm at home, I feel totally like my, like there's no difference. I can't hear the difference in my own voice. I hear the difference in my voice when I play back a recording, but I don't hear it in my ears. Um, but man, when I'm out in social situations, that's when I really notice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, definitely felt a difference recently when I was at a potluck of vaccinated friends. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Pot like a vaccinated friends and family. Um, and I kind of noticed the way I was sitting, noticed the way I was dressed, noticed the way I was interacting with the other people and was like, yeah, there's some of this is transition. Like, I may not actually be acting differently, but people are perceiving me differently, even though I'm, I'm still the same. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, one thing that I've kind of wondered about is, um, how much of the effect of testosterone and the way that it changes your emotions and, and the way you react to things, how much of that has affected this process of dealing with my dad's sickness and, and death. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person, I have been the kind of person who cries at all sorts of things. Um, and 
I'm, you know, I haven't cried about my dad's death per se, which isn't entirely surprising, especially if you watched the last video. We had a very complex relationship. Um, but then on the other hand, it is surprising because, you know, I mean, I can burst into tears about the death of somebody I didn't even know. So <laughs> this is a, mm, I don't know. Um, I have had moments where like something will trigger an actual deep feeling of grief and I feel like tears well up, but then it just disappears. And again, I'm not sure how much of that is just the complex relationship we had, how much of that is testosterone, you know, that. I just don't know. Uh, I'm going to be talking to a therapist about that, <laughs> uh, among other things. I'll be talking to her about some other things as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. And we're 16 minutes in and I don't want to get into boring land. But yeah, so one other thing. Um, so I always meant this channel to be more than just about being trans. I called it transformations because uh, I wanted to explore, um, I wanted to explore mysticism and, and maybe like the interplay of mysticism and, and the boundary walking of being trans and things like that on this channel. Um, but something has kind of solidified that around the fact that my dad passed away and I would like to do something uh, in honor of his life. So a few weeks before my dad died, when he was still trying to like explain why he couldn't possibly retire, he pointed out that if he didn't retire, he could make enough money to pay to send me to rabbinic school. <laughs> and I was like, well, I would really like to go to rabbinic school and have wanted to do that for a very long time. Um, you're bargaining. <laughs> and this is this like, no, you, you actually need to retire, dad. Love you, but re retire. <laughs> anyway, um, in the last few weeks of his life, he, he did express a lot, um, how much it meant to him that I've learned how to lead services, that I've learned how to lay in Torah, that I've, you know, done so much in Jewish education in general. And so, um, in his honor, uh, one of the things I'd like to do is a series of videos on, um, Kavana in Jewish prayer. Kavana literally means intent, but it's also kind of like, um, the things that you think and feel while you're saying a prayer, ways to take the words of the prayers and sort of unpack them so that the prayer has, you know, many layers and many meanings and you're able to hold those layers and meanings as part of your prayer work and part of your sort of meditative work in prayer. So I've started making some videos. Uh, and I'll be editing those. I'm going to do little short versions, short clippy p versions on TikTok, and then I'll do full blown videos here on YouTube, uh, right here on this channel. And if you're totally not into that stuff, don't worry. I will have transgender updates and information in one playlist and the Kavana Jewish prayer in another playlist. So you can just pick the videos that are actually interesting to you. All right. Thanks. Talk to you soon.